Traumatic events can help build really good character both in the real world and in the world of Kenshi. I mean, this guy definitely looks like he's having a rough time, but who knows? If he doesn't die from this, he's probably gonna wake up to become like a super villain or some shit. As for Kenshi, is the only open world sandbox game that allows you to take control of either one character or a wide variety of characters while exploring a huge world and attempting to survive. Whether it's from the starving bandits that ambush you in packs of hundreds, or the unlimited possibilities that come from modding the game. Kenshi offers a very brutal yet still beautiful experience, and today I'm gonna take you on that journey with me. Woo! Yeah! So this will be like an edited playthrough of Kenshi, like a spiritual successor to the Let's Struggle. Check that out if you haven't already. That's a good series, man. I booted up around 75 mods for this playthrough as well. I know it's not in 100 counts like I used to do, but I want to work it back up there, you know, start with a few mods and then slowly get more as time goes on. And don't worry, just because the mods aren't in 100 count yet doesn't mean that this playthrough was at all easy or just a, a walk in the park, really. This was just yet another brutal but beautiful adventure. Now to begin we gotta pick a start, so I usually go for Wanderer. I know this is like the fifth fucking time I've picked Wanderer for Kenshi videos, but this is just how I like to do it. I feel like this is the uh, vanilla way to play Kenshi even though you're modded. After we picked our start, we get to go on and make our character. So I made Mr. Peters here, he's going to be the star of our show, the v MVP, you know, Mr. President. Everybody has to protect him. But, um, big problem right now it is just him, so nobody is really on his side yet. He's not a very good president if he doesn't have, like, some secret service or somebody that can help him not just die. So, we decided to go and sneak over to the house that's in the hub. This house just always spawns random stuff in it, usually just garbage crap, but it's enough to at least get us, like, a little bit of money. Sometimes it spawns better stuff than other times. This time, I'm not gonna lie, it was a pretty crap one. Like, we got water jugs, bowl, eh, fucking garbage. And on top of that, when we open the chest, we get more fucking water jugs, a green fruit, which we can't even eat, and a uh, cactus rum, which we can't drink. So completely pathetic, all in all. With that, at least we got some stuff to sell, so we go over to the bar, which isn't too far away in the hub, and here we're able to sell all of our stuff. This doesn't get us a lot of money. We deadass make under 500 cats from this entire transaction. Either way though, we can go and look around the bar and talk to anybody that's in there. And this is where we find Hobbs. Now Hobbs is a pretty interesting guy. He claims to be looking for some kind of uh, monster. We tell him we'll help him search for it and with that he joins our party. Now we now have two people, at least one person to defend Mr. Peters. But anyone else is going to cost a little bit of money to take. As well as these bar thugs, they can't be recruited at all, they just aggro you. So the best choice for these guys is actually just to initiate battle with them through dialogue, let them attack you, and then you'll have all the ninja guards come in to help. This will at least give us a little bit of experience, we can take their armor as well, which is way better than what we have right now, seeing as Hobbs basically has garbage, and same with Mr. Peters, I mean he just has fucking rag clothes. On top of this, we can also pick up the bodies, that way while we do go around and do our little activities around town, we'll be getting some much needed strength experience. With that, I go back into the bar and sell off these goods, and this does give us a little bit of money, a little bit over a thousand. But we're still pretty far off from our goal of around six thousand to get another recruit, so we'll have to go and mine some copper. Right away though, we're reminded of the terrors of all the people that do inhabit the land of Kenshi. The slave mongers are horrible. If we end up getting knocked out, they'll come over, patch us up, just to bring us to a slave camp and enslave us. Like, instead of letting us die, they'll heal us but they'll also take us to a slave camp in order to prevent an inevitable tragedy that is just bound to happen to you eventually in Kenshi we need to one get stronger and two get more characters to do this we're gonna be mining copper now some say mining copper is boring, I enjoy it quite a bit. I get to watch my characters, we get in some battles every now and then. And on top of this, I have a brand new top tier strategy for when you start out. Instead of having to go back and forth right away, we can use the knocked out person that we have carried as another backpack to fill them up with copper. And then we'll be able to bring basically like four characters worth of copper to the bar at once. 
At least when we got back, we'd have enough copper to sell to actually make us a few thousand cats this time. And with this money, I decided it'd be a good idea to purchase a house right away and try to build it. This way, we'll have automatic mining set up real soon and we'll be able to have people just mine for us while we do other stuff. Unfortunately, though, this is the hub, so there's like fuck all here for building materials, meaning we would have to go to outside of a town to try and find more building materials to finish off the rest of a house. The bar just outside the hub had a few NPCs in it that looked pretty damn gnarly. One guy with like a purple scythe, purple swords and stuff. A lot of cool things. This comes from the Skeleton Fox mod, of course. And looking after weapons, there's a lot of good weapons and armor in here, but we're pretty fucking broke, so we couldn't really buy any. All I was able to get was one building material, that way we could finally finish building the house. And while it's not much, a kingdom is a kingdom at the end of the day, and this is just the start to theirs, so at least they now have a home base. We can set up a research bench, that way we can advance with a technology tree and unlock more things to craft and build. And now with that, I decided it'd probably be a good time just to run back and forth a little bit and get a little bit of strength experience seeing as there's mostly just hungry bandits and dust bandits around the border zone right now with a little bit of strength and attack levels we can actually stand our ground against them and at least not get critically wounded this is when mr peters noticed on the inner outskirts of the town walls there was a big robot just standing there with absolutely no clue what this robot is doing just chilling there we had to go talk to him and figure out what was up his name is um something crazy v1 he says he's defending the place from attackers so we ask him to fight our attackers and he's gonna help us so that's wicked this guy is huge if you've watched any of my other videos you know that skeleton units always end up becoming like the fucking top tier of a party and v1 definitely looks like one of them we have three people now in our party and us making some pretty good progress i decided to go pick up some building materials that way we could finish the research bench and finally get researching storage that way we can set up the automatic mining this is when i tried to get miss peters to stay back evan v1 and hobbs to go out but i noticed that we could not click the ore with v1 this is because v1's technically like an animal unit in the game is not a regular human like it looks like a human has leg and arm like one has backpack for one but i guess it does kind of make sense either way it fucking blows so we just have to go on without that and i guess he'll just be like a bodyguard for our group but we're richer than we think as right away we get the copper storage all done that way we can now start to automatically mine we won't have to spend as much time like manually clicking we'll just put it in the box themselves and yeah, like how like days later i went back to the bar and these guys still all have their weapons like held out because of the vagrants it will be quite some time until we get up there but at the same time at least this way we have a very low chance to die with v1 protecting mr peters and hobbs we already have a pretty good unit to kind of absorb a lot of hits and protect us but we still didn't have enough people in our group so after selling our next load of copper i went over and talked to kiji one of the scorch landers in the bar once i recruited her we can now have three people mining at once making us even more money per day and really i could just sit back and chill while while all my characters did mining for me and we slowly made more money to get to our next recruit. This is when I looked around the hub and actually found this unit Skeleton Fox. Now he's the same unit that was in uh, quite a few of my older videos so I figured we'd hire him because he's only 6,000 as well. He also has this giant ninja shuriken like Naruto style on his back which is wicked. But right away I noticed we were getting attacked by hungry bandits and this would be our first battle. We at least had 5 people in our party, well 4 and then 1 including V1. But V1 is a powerhouse, he's not very fast but when he does land a hit finally, it does a lot of damage, knocks him right back make some bleed with a little bit of training not only v1 but the others in the party as well can definitely become very strong i will certainly need that as well mining ore isn't the lifetime dream for the party we need to get to like better spots eventually right now just making enough money to get both supplies and then what we need to survive like med kits and other shit has to be our main priority as we're barely just scraping by <laughs> mining is very slow at the start of a game too with nobody having laboring skill it just makes the whole process very long. 
it's at least pretty AFKable, so it's not very hard work. And after a few days, we actually had enough money to go to the Shinobi Thieves and give them 10,000 cats. That way we could join the group. The reason why we want to do this is when we go to new cities, we'll be able to sell our stolen goods to that faction without having any guards attack us or anything like that. As well as the Shinobi Thieves actually having some places to train located upstairs. It's not very good. They only go up a few levels, like level 5 for attack. But level 5 for attack is a lot better than level 1. And our alliance with a faction will stand with us for the rest of the game. So we'll always have access to this stuff or always have access to them in other towns. While Skeleton Fox was mining, he saw a group of around 10 hungry bandits. And this, we just had to fight. There's no way we could just let them escape they're all pretty weak even though they do do <laughs> fucking do do <laughs> even though they do you know like uh, quite a bit of damage to our party it's still pretty decent like we were able to take them out and then also get some defense experience v1 really being one of the highlights of a show every time he lands a hit he just like sends them flying it's so rewarding to watch with that it was just left down to skeleton fox and v1 to fight the rest of the hungry bandits now they were starting to give an upper hand on us. Most of our people were knocked out. And then when V1 finally fell, it was only up to Skeleton Fox. He unfortunately couldn't beat the Starving Bandits, so they would end up beating us. But on the bright side, we do get experience, so all in all, it's worth getting uh, knocked out for a bit. Half of our people were kind of critically injured, so we had to make sure we got them healed right away before we started to bleed out. And with Mr. Peters and Kiji both being in recovery comas, I decided just to pick them up and then drag them over to the bar. I had to do this one at a time because uh, <laughs> we had a fucking broken arm, so only one person could grab somebody. And even V1, like, he was walking so slow after that battle. They had taken out his legs, like, completely, and he was still pretty injured as we needed to find a new skeleton repair kit so that we could heal him. I would have to send Hobbs just over to a new town. This place is owned by the Adventurers Guild, and luckily here we did have skeleton repair kits, so we'll be able to heal up V1. As well as there being plenty of drifters around, I figured might as well get another recruit here for cheap. This guy, I wanted to customize a little bit though. I have like quite a few uh, plans for this character indeed. Like, a, uh, he sort of remind me of like a boss from One Piece, you know, he's looking gnarly. I made sure that he had like this sort of like hoodie pockets in his stomach <laughs> from his natural stance. And then changed up his facial features a little bit. And with that, we now have Hand in the Party. A literal fucking demon. Meanwhile, while they ran back, the rest of our party were still waiting at the hub with the injured. And there we could finally heal up V1. Luckily, we won't even need a skeleton repair bed with V1 as well because his limbs won't deteriorate as he's an animal skeleton. And while everyone else was getting healed up, I got Hand to go over and do some melee offense training. Off in the distance, I could see a group of starving bandits that were wandering in a circle for hours, so I decided to send my guys all over to go and fight them. Of course, when I sent them over, they started to move and like start to like walk away, so we had to chase them a little bit. But we did catch up to them, and seeing as they're all pretty injured already, we're basically able to just go in and pick off all of them. It would be a long way to go and a lot of groups of injured people <laughs> until we could actually fight well, but at least we're at a good start. And right away, when we tried to go back to mining, it did not come as planned as a bone dog came in and attacked Hobbs to knock him out. Like he had just gotten better, are you fucking kidding me? On top of that, the bone dog attacks other people in our party, so they all get injured as well. But on the bright side, we were at least able to take it down. Now, I had Hand working on some strength training for a couple of days just to get his stats a little bit more up. And once I got his strength levels into the double digits, I finally put down the Starving Bandit and decided to figure out something for him to do. Seeing as we had been mining copper and iron as well for the past few days, we had plenty to sell so we could at least make some money for food and other materials. So I decided to grab a few books just so we could work on researching a few more simple things. Although constantly, we would keep on having interruptions from different groups of bandits. Even though they wouldn't usually attack us first, you know, of course we would have to start the battle that way we can get the experience we need, get them levels. In the world of Kenshi, there is no thing such as morals. There's only the levels that are attached to your character and how much of a chance you have to survive against other degenerates. And thankfully, with what we have right now, our chance is pretty high. You can see off in the distance, legs going flying across the screen and stuff, like, it was crazy. We're already knocking off limbs and chopping them off. Even though the group is still fairly small and only with six people in it, 
it's starting to get very strong. At least for the border zone, that is. We're not going anywhere else in the border zone for now. Fuck that. In all reality, you know, we are at least doing better than most playthroughs. A large thanks to V1. And with it being a couple weeks, we had finally gotten some laboring stats, so we were starting to get iron and copper at such a rate that we were maxing out the store in the hub. Therefore, it was finally time for us to move. There's no way we could stay in the hub and efficiently get strong and make a lot of money. So the group would be adventuring their way off to Squin, just a little bit south of a hub. Another good city to start off in. Other than a huge group of hungry bandits that would chase them down all the way to the gate. I could have had the group stop and fight them right there, but it was a lot better idea just to have them come with us to the gate. Once we got close enough to Squin, the guards would come out and run towards the hungry bandits to help us fight them. This means while we still get damaged a bit, we're definitely not going to get damaged as much as we would have if we just took them head face on, one on one. Or in this case, one on four, because there's like 30 of them. <laughs> the Squin guards belong to the Shek race, and the whole town of Squin is part of a Shek faction. So while we don't exactly fit in around here, at least it would be a place that we could call home. As long as we have cats and combat abilities to offer, there's no way that they could kick us out. So we purchased our first building and with that we could start to get all the building materials we needed to build it. Thankfully Squin is a lot more resourced than the hub is, so it wouldn't be as hard to get building materials and other things that we needed for our projects. I also grabbed a bunch of the maps from a backpack trader just to look around and see what's on the whole map. We now have a few ruins, a few different cities, a bunch of places to go, so there's plenty of stuff for us to do. In order to do all that stuff though and not die, <laughs> we have to get strong and it's going to be pretty hard. There was a pretty nice looking unit outside of a house which I did consider getting but we already have one that's V1 and this guy has like two swords. He looks like a Final Fantasy robot. He would be wicked to get and I might get him eventually later on to play through but right now I cannot. Now with a house at least built we could put down another research bench and then build that so that we could get our way to the next research tech tree as well as putting down a food storage so we wouldn't have to manually give everyone food and then some copper and iron storage we're pretty much set up like we were before but a lot better there's a copper and iron ore node just next to each other outside of town and then inside of town we could work on researching one of the early game benefits to squin as well is that there's a lot of different battles that'll go on around the outskirts of a city so we could constantly get into different disputes and battles. This one was with the Dust Bandits versus the Nomads, so it meant a lot of easy experience and then free loot for us to pick up and sell. With a lot of our characters still being pretty much unarmed, pretty defenseless with really weak armor, it was pretty good to find more people to knock out and then take their armor or weapons off of. Ideally, we would want to make our own armor eventually, but for now, it'll at least protect us. With Tech 2 research unlocked as well, we can no longer research any of the things of a Tech 2 tree unless we built a new research bench. This takes a lot of iron plates, but at least once it's set up, we're able to research a lot more things. Mainly, I wanted to focus on some clothing manufacturing, that way I could finally get into armor smithing to make our own armor, as well as start to work towards getting new things to train with and put inside of our base. And with that, things were looking pretty nice and tranquil. We had people mining, we had hand researching, everything was going just as planned. The next day though, while we were researching, we would end up getting attacked by a new group. Of course, more hungry bandits, still managing to make their way out to Squint. No one knows where they come from. I don't know where they come from, like I, I know they make camps, but they spawn in so many packs, like why don't we just become cannibals? It slows down our progress a little bit, just because our people will get knocked out, we'll have to have them heal, but at least they do get stronger. In either way, we weren't in too much of a rush, as we had days of researching to do until we would have had everything we needed. Once I have the clothing manufacturing, at least all research, I want to put down a clothing bench and then a storage for fabrics, that way we could actually get into making our own armor. The Scorchlander is the best class to do this with as a Scorchlander receives a racial experience buff of 1.2 times experience for armor smithing they're one of the best classes to make armor with we'd also start to get ore at a much faster rate with higher laboring skills so now that we were on to a good payroll I decided it was finally time to go into the bars and find ourselves some Shek recruits the Sheks are very strong and having some of them at our side could definitely benefit our faction overall the first Shek I found Iran, I probably butchered his name, I decided to turn him into this. <laughs> Doesn't really look that good. I somehow made his uh, spine crooked. 
Uh, like, unbelievable, man. <laughs> Just look at this, like, posture, dog. Walk, watch him walk around the bar and stuff. Can you imagine this dude trying to pick up, like, other checks? <laughs> He might not be a good pickup artist, but he'll be a great warrior one day once we give him a proper training. He already has a few stats, so that'll help us out a little bit, especially as right after when we did get him, there'd immediately be a dust bandit attack following us. I wasn't going to give him cats, of course, and I'd rather get knocked out by them and get free experience than have to give him anything. But there was quite a few of them. They ended up taking down Hobbs and Mr. Peters, and with that, slowly picking off the other people in our party. It was getting rough, but luckily the squin guards were making their patrols and slowly came in. So we were able to take out most of the dust bandits and then we were able to heal up and bring everyone back to the bar. We'd lose another like half a day in progress, but at least everybody would be healed up again and then getting better. Each time we get knocked out, all it does is make us stronger and put us in the right direction to eventually make it to places like the Ashlands or Fishlands, you know. It's a repeat process of mining and then running to get the squin guards to fight bandits with us. That way we don't take a lot of damage. But we're finally getting our stats all to the double digits, which is really good. I sent Mr. Peters to the bar to see if there were any more Sheks that I might want to recruit. And of course, Ruka was there. One of my favorite companions or people that you recruit in Kenshi. As well as another Shek female who was named Zari. With both of them recruited, this now brought the party's numbers up quite a bit. But we would have to get some training in or else we weren't really going to make that much use of anyone. If we get our stats up just a bit, at least we'll be able to leave the border zone with some comfort knowing we won't instantly die. In order to do that, we're going to need a few things. Mainly our skills of melee offense, defense, dexterity, strength, all of that stuff needs to go up. Luckily and with mods, I can get a wooden dexterity pull which trains our dexterity up a little bit. As well as these sparring mats which train both melee defense and then martial art so hand-on-hand -hand combat. I'm not sure if you guys see where I'm going here with this, but um, seeing as we have a person named Hand, he would probably be the best to do martial arts. After everyone was done laughing at my amazing joke, they went back to training and were getting their skills up. I also installed another mod which gives us training dummies which allow us to train some skills up to level 70. It still does take quite a bit, so I won't be getting them all the way up there, but at least this way we could leave Squin with some decent stats and really settle wherever we want to on the map. The uh, training animation for this though is uh, pretty weird, like for uh, defense you're just lying down, sleeping. This is a pretty strange animation. Not to mention, to train your dodge skill, you're basically just praying to the training dummy. <laughs> like, it doesn't make too much sense, but I guess it uh, works as long as we're getting the levels. But at least here we'd be able to have three or four people training at once for a few days while everyone else continued to mine for profit. With us also beginning clothing manufacturing, we're getting plenty of headbands, some in standard and high quality. It was becoming really good to sell. Now one thing I don't get is why the way I can sell them is different every time. Sometimes it transfers it right to my inventory, other times it just gives it to the guy like I'm trading it to. It's very frustrating, it takes a lot of fucking time. We were making good money though and with having quite a few people in our party at a second, it was time for everybody to take a break and gather up. We needed to arm our people. We still had people that didn't have any gear or just rag clothes, so I decided to go through and give everybody some standard equipment. Mostly high grade and standard grade. And we really ended up blowing most of our money, around like 70k just on armor. But at least we were way better off now. With us at least having armor now, I felt like it was a good time to go off on an adventure. One of our first actual adventures outside of Squin. But I quickly had to turn around and go back into Squin because I forgot to buy backpacks and <laughs> sleeping bags. Shit we need to survive. Even though we had plenty of backpacks to choose from, we didn't have any money. We were kind of broke seeing as we just spent all of our money on armor. So I would be forced to go and sell a few of our med kits just to make enough money to buy one backpack. And then I would be taking most of our food that we had in storage. With this we could finally go out on an adventure, find different groups of starving bandits and weak enemies, and slowly nail them down, starting to get more experience and levels as we go. It was finally at this point that we could see that we were actually doing pretty good against most of the bandits that we were coming across in the border zone. 
we're blocking most of the hits, putting in quite a few hits, and all in all, we are doing a lot better than we were the previous weeks. That still didn't mean we were invincible though, the groups do spawn from anywhere from 40 to like 200, so there'd be plenty of times where we'd be forced to be knocked out, but with our high toughness stat, all of our people would be able to come back to life pretty quickly to finish off a battle. Even the ones that couldn't walk would be trying to stab the enemy's feet and stuff, pure savages. The group was coming a long way from the previous weeks, where it was just Mr. Peters and no one else, we we're finally starting to get our own ground set up. We still needed a base, but at the same time, we weren't quite ready to handle all the slave raids and black ninjas that would come our way. And seeing as when we got back to town, we were still broke and had nothing else to sell, we would just be forced to stick it out for a little bit longer and get some more copper and iron to sell. With a whole group injured, Mr. Peters got to the bar first and everyone else was traveling at an incredibly slow speed, like they didn't show up to the bar until the very next morning. At least now we could get everybody healed up again and our stats had gone up quite a bit. They were all fighting for quite a while out there against many different starving bandits. So we would try to get back to mining as soon as possible, still being interrupted by odd bandits that were stray from the packs or leading their groups over to us. Our group could still handle themselves thankfully though against one or two, it was mainly just the big groups that we had to worry about. A border zone is just a constant war field with no real like authority, just complete pure anarchy, there's nothing positive going on around here, just constantly fighting between different factions off and on, off and on. And even though the game would keep on placing the copper into my inventory instead of just sending it to the shopkeeper themselves, we're still doing very good. It was at this point I decided with most of our other stats starting to get up there, it was time for everybody to get a little bit of strength training in. And with them just doing their normal activities of mining or whatever, while we run around with extra bodies on hand, we'll be getting more and more strength experience. It won't be too long though until another huge degenerate group of starving bandits decided to attack our party. Like, it scared me so much when I popped up, I had to press the B button. Like, <laughs> I didn't even press space. That's how you know, like, something fucked up. There was way too many of them and we're gonna stall our progress for so long like we're gonna end up being in squint forever at this rate we can't get more than six hours maybe three that's our best bet like three hours of mining and making profit back to being in beds and hospitalized like it's brutal we needed to get out of squint more out of a public eye honestly and that would come with getting our own base and one of the first dangers of squint popped up when i realized i had made a big mistake I sent Kiji to go to the general goods store, but then realized that the store was locked because it was just closing. This sent all the guards after us, causing them to do a lot of damage to her and knock her out. And on top of that, now she has a bounty and she's a prisoner. Skeleton Fox tried to help her, that made it even worse, because now he's a prisoner too. So we got two of our people behind fucking bars in the same place just because we tried to go to the store. Mr. Peters was very far from fucking impressed. <laughs> we have to go there and then try and find the dude. He's like always on a different floor or running around doing random shit. But once we do finally find him, we can go and tell him we're here to bail out a friend and we can bail out Skeleton Fox and Kiji. When I did this though, it didn't really work. Like I guess only Skeleton Fox got out as when I tried to get Kiji to get out, they then attacked Mr. Peters and he was knocked out and had a bounty on him. Fucking uh, ridiculous, man. I couldn't really do much with Mr. Peters. If I brought him back into the town to go to the bed, they would have just taken him and put him in a cell. Then I would have had to pay for his freedom as well. TG now being outlawed from the store, they attacked her on site when she started to try and buy stuff from them. What was a great spot to chill in about 10 minutes ago in the video is now our own hell, as we're constantly in and out of jail having to pay to get our friends out, and then being knocked out by the squid guards because they don't like us and they're fucking dicks. With already having to deal with countless starving bandit factions and dust bandits, fucking slavers, everything you can think of, Mr. Peters knew that he had to make it his main goal to try and get enough strength and money together that way everybody could get a base. To defend that base though, we'll need to do some strength experience training, so with everybody in a big group, I just sent them back and forth, you know, one side of a city to the other, that way we could get our strength up quite a bit. And then after I was done, I just went on to sell all of the iron and copper that we had. We had made quite a bit of money with most of the bandanas selling for near about 500 cats each on average. We had made quite a bit of profit on top of the armor that we had already bought weeks previous. With the place no longer feeling like home, everybody grabbed the remaining food that we had and then we went to the backpack store to load up on some backpacks, sleeping bags, 
bags and other materials. Firstly, we'd need to go and try and find some more recruits, maybe a few people in the swamp area to bring back. And then after that, we'd have to try and find a suitable base location that would be good for trading and advancing in the game. This is when I also decided to finally upgrade our armor, specifically for Mr. Peters to make him more of an MVP unit of our party, giving him some high grade plate armor. He now at least stood out a bit more from the pack, and with that, we could finally decide to where we wanted to go and make our adventure. First off, there's a way station over to the north, east, yeah, never eat, yeah, ne east. So we had to go to the east in order to go to the way station. That way we could go to the skeleton repair bed. It wasn't too far out, so even if we did get into a battle, we could always return back to Squin to heal up or just continue going there to heal up the bar. This is when we found a weak group of escaped servants. And even though they did have the same numbers and characters as our party did, I decided it'd probably be a bit better to get some sneak experience off of them instead of attack them right away. By sneaking behind groups, you can get a lot more experience this way, but unfortunately, they decided to turn around right away and has foiled our plan completely, meaning we just had to attack them. That's when I noticed V1 must have unlocked like a super power move or something. He dealt 400 damage to like 4 of them at once and killed them all. Some type of projectile or like front facing beam just shot and killed 4 of them. Like, it is pretty wicked. We could leave the bandits there all to bleed out and then continue to go to the next way station. And by nightfall we'd finally make it there with us barely being all that injured from the fight. The first goal was of course to go to the skeleton repair bed as Skeleton Fox has been not repaired since the start of a series. Unfortunately, the way station is the worst, and it just doesn't fucking work. There's not enough power here. I guess they don't have enough, like, wind turbines set up. So that was really fucking lame. And I tried looking in the bar for anybody that was worth recruiting, but it seemed like everybody was just really weak. Like, I didn't want to train up more units right now. I needed people that would kind of know what they're doing. With a group not having that much opportunity over at the way station, we'd have to go and look somewhere else for our recruits. The town of Stark, located in the swamp, seemed to be our best bet hopefully there would be plenty of warriors there just waiting to be recruited this would also be our very first time leaving the border zone since spawning i know usually i try and leave a little bit earlier but we're trying to play it safe and i really think that we'll at least have a little bit of a chance in the swamp when finally entering the swamp you can also see why i don't like coming here there's a lot of rain it's pretty dark there's slave mongers, there's ninjas, there's a whole bunch of different things in the swamp. Instead of fighting the slave mongers, it'd be a smarter idea just to sneak up behind them and then walk by them, getting some stealth experience. And once I had enough of that, I decided to attack them. Now the reason why is because I felt like we would at least stand a chance against them and beat them. And then too, if a different group knocks us out later and they walk by, they're just going to patch us up and then enslave us. And although we are pretty strong now, we're still not all that great. I mean, the battle was pretty even between the slave mongers and our group, partly because of when we got arrested, they confiscated our weapons and I didn't replace any of them. At least now we were finally in the swamp, uh, although we were doing the same thing as before, just fighting a different kind of bandit group, the slave mongers were still making good progress. With about half of our group being knocked down by the bandits one by one, it was a pretty rough battle for us, but Ruka, V1, and a few of the others came through and were able to take down all the slave mongers. With that, we could heal, and I knew that we were pretty beat up from that battle. Everybody had taken a lot of hits everywhere, so I decided to set up the four camp beds that we got from Squin on the ground here. That way, everybody could rest up and heal a little bit. I would also have to have the other people that were awake constantly fight the slave mongers who were waking up from the recovery comas and injuries. And off in the distance, we could see somebody get an eaten alive by a river raptor this is one of the creatures of a swamp i really don't like these things like just look at them how can you really like them once we were healed at least a little bit i decided to dismantle the beds and pick them up we always try and make sure we do this but there's plenty of times where i forget to and then there's just random beds chilling out in the wasteland we were still quite a distance though from where we needed to be and when looking a little bit ahead of us i could see that red sabers and other types of bandits were all fighting making the swamp a very dangerous area thankfully there's a group of menders these guys come from a mod called menders it basically just adds people that go around the wasteland and healing you that aren't the slave mongers that fucking enslave you see this is a more wholesome mod by following the menders we go pretty slow but we do at least avoid most combat nobody's going to attack us with all these crazy martial art guys around us and on top of that we get to finally relax and have a good look at the swamp that is until dark when the swamp is just 
one of the worst places to look at we got groups of river raptors everywhere like packs of 30 of them they're fucked man like i there's many reasons why you don't need to like these things and like look at this last one this last one is walking way different this is like fucking limp in his leg right high in a shank or some drugs you know something crazy the menders also just stopped at this random town and went back and forth so we would have to leave the menders there and go out on our own luckily the next small town wasn't too too far away so we were able to make it there before any bandits decided to try and rip our throats apart there were a couple bars here as well so i decided i wanted to go check them out see if there were any recruits inside either of the bars here unfortunately though there wasn't really many people just mercenary guilds people I really should have hired them though seeing as when we went outside of this small little town right away the bands of bones were already attacking another group and then our group was getting involved in the fight as well we had no choice but then just to try and hold our best against two different groups of bandits I made sure to micromanage the battle by having one person selected attack one different bandit at a time that way we would equally disperse our damage as good as possible this still didn't do that much seeing as our people were getting injured very fast the band of bones were very strong shecks using planks to take out most of her people in huge swings this was our first taste of what it was like outside of a border zone just complete chaos you have ninjas that are way faster than us and you have shecks that are way stronger than us all in all, our group just didn't really stand a chance. Our best chance was just to try and play it a bit more defensive and hold our ground until eventually either one of the groups knocked over the other one and then they could fuck off. V1 wasn't going to give up that easily though. Even though he couldn't land in most shots, the few times he would land in a shot, it would send them pinging back. Using his strength and health to his advantage, he'd be able to take down the rest of the swamp ninjas and the band of bones. And to our luck, another group of menders had just come by away so the mender was going back and forth healing all of the people there unfortunately not only our people but the swamp ninjas and seeing as there's another group that came in right after this this was fucking hell even if we did win this battle everybody would be so injured it's going to take a long time to get back to normal health v1 being at almost negative stats for both of his arms and legs this was a very brutal battle but still, just somehow, because of them not hitting his stomach, head, or any of the vital arteries on V1, he was able to pull through all the way until the end when Skeleton Fox was able to rise back up. But even though we had about three more people rise from the fucking dead to go attack, we still somehow would end up losing three of them until it was just Skeleton Fox versus the Bandit. Skeleton Fox would of course take a hit to his chest, finalizing the final blow. Finalizing the final blow. I'm so bad. They got the final strike. You know what I'm saying? And then the mender he goes around healing both our people and the bandits So this is pretty hectic as we need to get healed. We need to place down beds get everybody situated But we also need to get the fuck away from these bandits We cannot chill and wait until they all wake up to go and do the same thing over and over and over again And seeing as we weren't all that far from both the other town that was behind us and then the big town of Stark I decided just to go forward. The group would continue to push forward even though we'd have a few odd interruptions from Swamp Ninjas and other factions. Almost the entire group had at least one limb that was like one shot to knocking them out. So every time we got slowed down it just didn't help us. We are basically stumbling our way over to Stark like at a very slow speed, 4 miles per hour. But without anyone falling victim to the bandits or slave mongers, we made it into Stark and finally had arrived. The beautiful swamp city was blooming with different shop caravans, different trader outposts, bars, houses, plenty of things to do and see. But our main goal was of course trying to find new recruits and companions. Firstly, I'd set everybody up to go inside of a bar and go into the beds and we also found a skeleton repair bed here. This one actually worked, so I was able to put Skeleton Fox in it, and now all of his limbs would be restored back to original base point value. On top of that, when looking around the bar, I did notice a Hiver. We had not met a Hiver yet in the series, and this guy also uses turrets and crossbows, which is something we definitely need on our party. His skill levels are in the 60s, which is really high, so it makes up for a lot of his other stats being lower. We also go on to find another man named Stubbs. Stubbs tells us he's a great adventurer who's worth a lot of money or a lot of cats 
but I try to swindle him as best as I could. Of course, it doesn't work, so I need to grab someone else to go and pay for him. But once we do give Stubbs his money, he joins our party with no problem at all. And then with that, we're finally looking good. We have quite a few recruits now. Still looking for one more though, I find one of my other favorite companions in Kenshi, Hammett. This guy really hates the slavers because they stole his girlfriend. And it's not like he didn't like his girlfriend, he liked his girlfriend, so it's really sad. So he joins our team as we tell him we're against the slavers as well. And with that, there's only one more person in the bar that I wanted to talk to. A little skeleton over here. Now I made sure to change his height and his build a little bit so he looks a little bit more funky. And with that we had over a dozen people all in our team. We are actually looking like a normal faction, like a normal band of warriors. With this I decided we could go back and head through the swamp towns and make our way back into the border zone to head to Squin. We would need to grab a few more materials and a few more things before we could set up our own base but we were finally getting close to that. And with 13 total recruits now, I decided it was time to go back into the border zone and we were gonna settle somewhere around there. I wanted to have a base in the border zone, that way we could become the true king of a border zone, take down the Dusk Bandit King, and then take down a few of the other kings in the area. Firstly though, we had to take down a normal group of Dusk Bandits that were making our patrols. With 13 total people on our team, I felt like we stood a pretty good chance against them. First getting some stealth experience until that failed. Once they did finally notice us, I made sure that everybody was set up in a good spot, all layered around the Dusk Bandits and different ones of them. They demanded money from us, but of course, never give a Dust Bandits your money. You're better off just taking a free defense and toughness experience. Worst they're going to do is knock you out and maybe kill you if you're really bad. Our newest recruit, Green, was doing very bad. Even though he has a turret and he can shoot them from quite a bit away, they just run up to him and then try and attack him anyways. So he just kept on getting hit in a crossfire of swords slashing back and forth and couldn't really get any good shots in. While some of the party would end up being knocked out, quite a few people in the party were doing pretty good. Hand, especially with his martial arts, and Mr. Peters finally getting a hang of his two-handed weapon. It wouldn't be too long until all of the dust bandits were finally knocked out and we could heal up and then continue on our way through the border zone. It would take us a little bit to do this as everybody was pretty injured and withstand quite a few hits, but not everybody got knocked out which was good. Thankfully it wasn't us that it was knocked out as a bone dog came over to the pack right after to go and eat every single corpse that was there. This bone dog of course belonged to the slave mongers who went over and then patched up the ones that the bone dog wasn't eating just to bring them to a slave camp. And even though we are a bit stronger, due to us being injured, we would still be getting swindled by different bandit groups all around the border zone. Firstly, a hungry bandit group that was pretty small, didn't take us too long to take them down and then get back on our way, traveling to go and find a new base. I had a few ideas for location of a base, I just needed to get the building materials and a few more things before we all left, as well as get everybody in bar beds again because we had sustained a lot of damages. Soon we would be making our own beds and sleeping in them at our own base. To do that, we would need different things like research, so I decided to load up on a bunch of books and get every research that I felt was essential. Mainly, we need stuff that allows us to build building materials, iron plates, as well as weapon smithing and training. A few of the simple things like that will allow us to run a base pretty efficiently. As well as try and make as much money as we can while we're here, because it's quite an investment to go and set up your own base and then try and run it until you get self-sufficient. Going to the general goods store, I was able to load up on all the building materials and stuff that I would need. I would also grab some farming materials, that way once I had bad stuff research, we could get into farming. And by the next morning, everybody had finished resting up and was ready to go out on the adventure to find a base. Looking around Squin, I decided to go more to the northeast, yes east, the east side of a border zone where we would go and find a base. I needed to find somewhere where I could mine a little bit of iron as well as copper whenever I needed, that way I could become self-sufficient. But there's plenty of hungry bandits to slow us down on our way. Firstly, find a group of about two dozen, I decided to attack them and try and get a bit of experience off from that battle. 
It worked pretty well, but we instantly encountered another group. The hungry bandits were just spawning everywhere between Shem and the border zone. Like, there's no break to them. And even though they didn't aggro us, you know, that's the rule. We gotta attack the hungry bandits. You're basically dumb not to. But because there's so many of them, it's kind of hard for us to get a lot of hits on them sometimes. Meaning we'd end up getting quite a few damages before we even done anything. Like, we had already gone through two battles and everybody was about, like, at half health. Continuing through the border zone, I decided that I'd want to pass the way station and go on the very border of a border zone. <laughs> That's not so stupid, man. Border of a border zone. But, you know, in between the border zone and Shem, as I wanted to go and explore, like, both places in this, uh, save file. And also, Shem doesn't exactly have the best farming, uh, neither does the border zone. As well as Shem having beak things, I didn't want to really exactly be directly in Shem. And another reason why I didn't want to be in Shem was because of the group sizes that spawn. I noticed when we got attacked by our third group of hungry bandits, there was a flood of new hungry bandits coming in to join the fight. And when I mean flood, I mean a lot of them. There was probably about 200 to 300. I did not go through to count them, that's just an estimate. It was way too many. All of our people could do some serious damage to each hungry bandit with just one or two hits, but at the same time, each bandit had a fucking stick and was just ready to attack them from behind. V1 would of course be the star of a show again, taking the most hits, having the most swarm up and attack him, while also dealing out the most damage to people in a group. The hungry bandits had outnumbered us so much that we had basically just been separated. Nobody was next to each other. Everybody had a whole group of hungry bandits surrounding them, and with half of our party, knocked out already it wasn't looking good i decided i would need to speed up time or else this fight would just go on forever and i'd be sitting here for hours and surprisingly our team actually started to wake back up and do good even though we'd start to go down every now and then we'd wake up and take down a few more and then someone else would wake up and take down a few more with us getting very lucky and eventually a bull coming by to stall us out some time the bull would end up fighting a bunch of them taking them out until they eventually took down the bull nobody wanted to give up though specifically blueback he kept on getting up like every three minutes he wouldn't be knocked out for more than a few seconds sometimes it was quite impressive i mean the battle had spanned on for many hours now in game and they were still combating the hungry bandits trying their best to take out the rest of them in the group and it finally got to a point where it was actually looking manageable with each strike taking down one to two sometimes three hungry bandits at a time they were finally starting to lose and with v1 having all of his limbs being the negatives it wasn't looking too too good for him but he was still just holding on by a thread i had to prioritize everybody to try and get up and sneak around and heal themselves because without that some people would end up bleeding out for sure soon and with some of the bandits going to run off and then fight the bulls that were in the area we got very lucky with most of them having to crawl away and flee with the last one that was standing being taken down we had finally won the battle we could make sure that everybody was okay firstly by getting everybody healed and then getting everybody put into some beds we'd also need some people guarding the area as countless amounts of hungry bandits would be waking up to eventually be either knocked out or killed by us we were victorious against the 200 hungry bandits we got very lucky i was honestly very impressed by the group even over starving bandits it's not like we have a lot of skills but this is when yet another group of around 200 to 300 starving bandits came flooding in like what the fuck man are you kidding me it was going so well like i had this whole planned until these guys came in and fucked up the whole narrative for some reason there's just two separate two to three hundred banned groups of starving bandits so even though our people had barely no time to heal they had to all get back up right away to fight the starving bandits again this didn't go as good as last time i mean even though we got plenty of damage in on them there was still quite a few casualties people were getting knocked out left and right i had to try and get people to heal up and with our whole party knocked out i had to try to get everybody just to stay passive and stay down let all the hungry bandits crawl away and then that way we could at least heal each other some people were bleeding out and a lot of people had previous injuries from the battle that they had just gone through before that one so now everybody had to sleep yet another day on top of bloody mattresses with bodies all around them until everybody was healed and we were able to dismantle them and then make it on our way going back into the border zone because yeah fuck shem i finally found a place that didn't look too too bad 
it was a little bit flat had some trees around yeah but at least we could set up a nice little base there's a place to mine stone as well as a two different iron nodes there and then a copper node all the way to the never eat shredded wheat to the west i set up a stone processor which allows us to turn stone into building materials which allows us to build things on our base and then i would also need an iron refinery that way i could refine all my iron into iron plates with that those two things are basically the main things you need to build anything in kenshi so once we have that set up we'll be all set as well as i want to make sure the base felt nice and homely I think that's the word. Setting up a nice little square house right at the corner. The base was pretty compact, but it was pretty nice too. Right away, because we had placed down some things, we already had farm traders and other people on their way to come and see us. This was really helpful as we definitely needed a few more building materials and other things to set up things around the base, such as walls. I wanted to just set up a nice little exterior wall, something small for the inside, and if I need to, expand it eventually. For this, I just decided to go with a little cube that spanned around all the iron and it kept all of the iron inside of our base. With the outline of this wall now at least set up, all we needed was iron plates to make the gate and then building materials to build all the walls. But unfortunately, we would right away be struck with a bandit attack from the Black Ninjas. They like to steal our bread and whatever food we have, as well as just devastate us with different cutting attacks like shurikens and katanas. We couldn't let them have what we didn't have though, so of course we had to fight them right away. This battle proved to be insane, with V1 taking out a huge group of them right away with like a super move. It really just came down to V1 and our two other skeletons to fight the Black Ninjas, as everybody else would bleed out from the cutting damage. I really didn't think this fight looked all that good, and trust, it didn't. We had basically everybody knocked out except for V1. But their cutting attacks can't take down V1. He doesn't bleed like normal skeletons or people do. So his oil levels would stay fine. And even though his limbs would go under damage, as long as he didn't hit his head, chest, or stomach, he was okay. That meant V1 would take out the remaining black ninjas, meaning that we had won the battle. We could heal up and celebrate victory. The black ninjas had a bunch of weapons on them. And this is great for cash. And not only that, the experience that we gained from the battle definitely made our whole group a lot stronger. We would have to continue just a few more days with getting new building materials from the way station and then bringing it back to our base. Luckily it wasn't too far though. And I decided as we had just received a bandit attack, it'd be a good idea to talk to the mercenary captains and send some of them to protect our base for a couple of weeks. It costs about a thousand cats per day, and then we get a few extra people that'll help us during all the bandit attacks. With a way station not being all that far, I could watch Mr. Peters basically run from the way station all the way back to the base, hopefully in some time do it a lot faster. But this is when I noticed I had done goofed up. I did not realize I had not researched anything to do with farming. So even though I had farming materials, I couldn't really start any farms here, unfortunately. And I didn't even have storage to put the stuff into because I had no idea what farming was or any technology with it. This meant I would have to double down on building iron plates and trying to get stuff ahead. As if we built another research bench, we could simply bring books to that from the way station and then research the technology that we needed in order to get into farming. On our way back from the way station, we could see a whole group start to attack V1 and Mr. Peters and right when I had them run away and go into the base, they I just decided to cut off and run away from the base. Either the AI pathfinding is fucked, or we're starting to get strong and people are scared of us. It's probably the first one. I was also able to set up another clothing bench to make this place truly like home. It was just set up like Squin, just set up like the hub, and now we could actually advance and get more things. I did want to send Hand of a hub though, just because there were a lot of books and he'd easily be able to use the research bench there for now until we got enough materials to build the new one here. As well as we need to research stuff for power, I'd completely forgotten power was a thing in Kenshi and we can't even build or craft anything without power. Besides that though, I decided to put in a giant bug house. I think this place would be where we put in most of our stuff to train, like our training dummies and all that. I then set up a couple ramps around the town walls. It was starting to actually look like a legit base. Even though everybody in the group had to go through hell, at least on the bright side we had finally made a base. We had plenty of friends and people- why is this fucking pan to his ass? 
Houses were being constructed, mercenaries were walking around protecting the place, and in total everything was looking really good and set up. Mr. Peters, still not, well, the best president in the world, he's still doing a lot better than most. He's got like 12 people that support him. That's a lot, man. And with that, it brings us to the end of this brutal but beautiful tale on Kenji. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I put a lot of work into it, and I hope if you guys liked this one, you leave a like, comment, subscribe, and maybe check out the future ones that are coming out or any of my previous content. If you want to check out any of my other social medias and keep up with me on there, they're all in the description below or on the channel banner. Anyways though, I appreciate the support as always, and thank you for making it to the end of the video. Hope you guys take it easy, and peace.